Um, I would, so this is the next tool in the toolbox. I would suggest that starting point, if you want to network with a purpose, is you have to understand who is my ideal client. I would say less than 10% of the professionals I've worked with in my 20-year career have a relatively clear idea of who their ideal client is. Well, I can't put you together. If, if, so if Peter tells me who his ideal client is, great. I can then start putting him together with people. If I don't know Peter's ideal client, I could be on the plane flying back to Denver tomorrow and never discover that the person I sat next to was a perfect fit for Peter. And I think we all, in large professional service firms, we commit this mistake daily, we don't make it our business, our intention, to learn about others' practices. So we're going to remedy that as of today. And what I would say is, you know, can you describe your ideal client? So, uh, Brian, I remember reading your, um, uh, your, your survey, and you, you actually did a pretty good job of explaining it. Would you just, for the benefit of the group, describe your ideal client so that we can at least illustrate how this, how this would work? Uh, uh, let's see if I did. I write it down. Well, you know what? Don't worry about it. I, I'm not asking. They don't know what you wrote down, so you can fake it. <laughs> Pressure's off. That's good. Uh, no, let's see. <laughs> to Brian's answer, I really truly want to go through my Rolodex. So you gave me qualitative things that are a little bit, they're not demographics. And that's a very, by the way, it's a very common answer that we get. So what I would like all of you to do is to think in terms of specifics. So debtors who restructure, so would it be mostly corporate entities? Corporate company? Yes, corporate. Okay. So I took private, company. private client. From the point of view of what a, you know, an area of practice. Right, and, and that's not uncommon. But what I want all of you to do is to come up with a an answer to this question that's enough clarity that the person listening can actually go, oh, either I know someone who fits that description, or wow, sounds interesting, but I don't know anybody. So let's go back through and do it because I want to illustrate it and then I'm going to have you all pair up and I want you to do it. And for those of you who are on the replay, I'm going to want them to do it as well. So, so we're going to actually pair up. We're going to try this. So let's go back through. So debtors, so walk me through. So what kind of company would it be? Private company? Would it be based in a certain geographic region? Does it matter Doesn't for you? Matter. Okay. So anywhere in Canada, anywhere in the U.S., anywhere in North America, what's the – give me a – Anywhere in the world? Yeah, I mean, like, but realistically, your ideal, realistically, your ideal client. Is, is Canadian. Okay, so it's a Canadian-based company. Does it matter if it's manufacturing or? or okay, so do you have certain industries that you know better than others? Do I? Yeah. I'm not sure, real estate, manufacturing. Okay, so let's just put those down. Real estate or manufacturing. Okay. Uh, who would be your point of contact within the company? Typically, job title wise. And there may be a couple of different. CEO or CFO. CEO or CFO, okay. Okay. Uh, in terms of size, is there an ideal size? Could they be a company that makes 50000 a year? Could be ideal client? Not ideal client. Someone who's going to want to accept sort of the way you work in terms of fees and whatnot. So is there at least a demographic picture? Are they going to be at least over 5 million sales or? Yeah, I was just thinking actually probably 5 million. 5 million in sales or above? Okay. What else? Anything else? See, you see what I'm doing? I'm a and I'm asking all of you to do the same thing for your answer. And you're going to do this in about two minutes. 
So anything else in terms of sort of demographics, in terms of the client. See, because this allows me to kind of go through my role. Okay, well, who do I know that's Canadian-based? Or, or who do I know that's in real estate or manufacturing? And who do I know that's either a CEO or a CFO? You know, and, and so it's a lot easier to go through it that way. So here's, this is probably far enough. And it, whoever you pair up with, if you want, you can even add a little bit more detail to it. But here's the question. How many people do you know who are, you know, let's say in the real estate or manufacturing field, probably CEO or CFO, have at least $5 million in sales. Just, those are just the demographics in your own network who are not already clients. Just for the benefit of Brian, when I do this with most people, the answer is between zero and four. It's a very small number. Rainmakers tend to know way more numbers. And again, for networking purposes, if you want to network with a purpose, I want to at least know who fits my ideal client profile so that I can grow that number. Any guess as to how many you have you know who are not already clients, number-wise? Probably most of them are not clients. But how many are we talking about? A dozen? A hundred? A dozen. A dozen. See, and that, again, that would suggest me, without knowing anything more <laughs> about Brian's practice, I would say he's probably got a fairly effective practice, just because that is not, that's a very high number, believe it or not. Now, there are some who say hundreds, so 12, let's just say that 12 is the number. All right, so how many in here might know someone who would fit this set of criteria besides, okay, one, two, three. All right, so now if I'm Brian, I want to have a conversation with Chris, with Peter, and who else had their hand up? Okay, and Mike. At some point, informally, just to find out, okay, well, you know, talk to me. Who, who is it that you thought of as we went through this exercise? And not only should you do it with those three, and if they, there may never be a connection made, but at least you want to have the conversation. Assuming the connection is made, you just went from 12 to 15. I'm not a math major, but I think that's about a quarter, a 25% increase in your network in the span of about two minutes at least in identifying the possibility of it being there. And the point is, all of us could do this. None of us does it, usually. All of us could. And once I am clear about who my ideal client is, all these other tools are even more valuable. Because then, I'll, I'll talk about speaking. I might want to make sure that the next speaking engagement, it's teeming with people who fit this criteria. And I turn down some speaking engagements that don't have people who fit that criteria. If I send out an article for reaction from somebody, I send it to people who, again, fit into this criteria because I want to start a dialogue. I want to meet with my friends, maybe, in my network who may have, again, either be these kinds of folks or would have a lot of friends who happen to fit that criteria. Does that make sense to everybody or not? So what I'm going to ask you all to do is an exercise. And again, for, the, for those who are doing this in the replay, I want you to actually go through this uh, exercise with each other. So pair up. I don't, I don't, I don't know if, if we have one group that's an odd number. I don't know how many we have in here. Then that's fine. We can have one group of three. But I'm going to give you literally, well, actually, it's a break. Um, do you want to do this exercise and then do the break, or do you want to take a break? Your call. Exercise. Let's do the exercise in the break. It would make a lot more sense. So here's what I'd ask you to do. Pair up with somebody, maybe somebody you don't know all that well or you don't know their practice that well, and ask them the question, how do I know when I'm talking to someone who would be an ideal client for you? And then you are actually asking, you're going through the same exercise I just went through with Brian. You need to be able to have enough detail to, to kind of tick through your own mental Rolodex so you can at least understand it. I'm not asking you to make introductions just so you can help that person get clear. So that'll be about two and a half minutes. The other two and a half minutes, I want you to be the person, instead of asking the question, you're answering the question. All right? And so you'll hear me about halfway through say, switch. So that's just to make sure that we're staying on schedule. Does everyone understand the exercise? All right, get to it. So go to two first. Can we go to uh, the Can we go to the course? Are you guys going? Yeah. You too? I'm solo. Okay, then you're with uh, Danny. Okay. Boom. Yeah, Danny. Go. See, that should happen. That should absolutely happen as part of this exercise. Anyone else? One final comment about this? Let me, let me sort of close. We'll take a break here of about 10 minutes, but let me just sort of close with this observation. 
What I would challenge, if you want to become a, a rainmaker and a trusted advisor, you want to make, you want to do a much better job of knowing what's in the Deloitte store. To Mario's point, the more, I would suggest, and we're going to talk about metrics towards the tail end of this in terms of tools. I would suggest you want to have at least one conversation like that with somebody inside Deloitte every business day. If you do, I've had people say, I really want to do this with my partners. If you do this every day, you will become among the most knowledgeable and connected in this organization. You will also build, would you agree with me, this builds even better connection. And if you do one a day and you're building a stronger connection, it also promotes something else we'll talk about after the break, which is cross-selling. So glad you are, glad, I really appreciate your willingness to sort of try this exercise. Let's take